Hello, we have another Saturday food support group. Um, we just get together every Saturday and talk about this kind of stuff. Um, and I wanted to lead this morning with a something that has really baffled me because I it was my identity. It was who I thought I was. I thought that I was unreliable. I totally thought that that was just who I was because for the first 40 years of my life, that that was the proof in my, in my evidence of my existence was I was unreliable. And then it's downstairs. <laughs> and then, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then uh, I quickly realized whenever um, we started this Saturday food support group, I was just looking back. You guys, I have not missed one week, even through holidays, even through sickness, even through everything. I have not missed one week for a year and four months of having this meeting. That's roughly 68 weeks, 68 weeks. That is, is evidence enough for me to know that it is possible at the age of 40 and I would say 50, 60, 70, for you to transform, for you to become reliable. And this wasn't difficult. It was, it was just something that I, I knew that I wanted to have these meetings. I knew that I wanted to meet you guys where you're at. And, you know, anyone can say, well, it's an hour a week, you know, but it's, it's more than that. It's at the same time every week. And I was able to show up and to you guys, you know, maybe that, that doesn't speak much, but to a mentally ill, unreliable person, that's like a pipe dream. It's an absolute pipe dream. I would even have people that would be like, Hey, Emily, um, can we schedule to go for coffee next Tuesday? And I'm like, I don't know. We can put it on the calendar, but I don't know if I'll show up. I don't know if I'll, I'll, I'll honor that. I was so inconsistent and I was so unreliable before in my mental illness. Now, if I went back to eating Doritos and ramen and soda and cake, I'm sure I'd be that same person. I'm sure I would. Um, but I want you guys to know, even if you're sitting there right now and you're like, I am not reliable. I never will be reliable. I want to encourage you that there is hope and that you are capable of changing. You are capable of progressing. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, and then we have um, uh, Monica wanted to give us an update. She's been uh, experimenting with fermented um, foods, fermented liquids. How would you say it? Both, both. So um, I have done keto and I've done carnivore and I've done protein sparing and high fat. And while I feel better, I just completely stopped having any kind of weight loss, which is taking a toll on my mental health and starting to take a toll on me. I'd like to move around better and I just wasn't having any weight loss. I was having, I have a lot of energy. Um, the constant hum in my brain, the inflammation in my brain is gone. And that in itself, there are many days that I'm like, if I never lose another pound, that's fine. But I would like to be able to move and do some things that I, was able to do a hundred pounds ago. So I had been focusing in the last year, reading about the GAPS diet and gut health and how that's just related to every other system of the body. And I had sort of a weird opportunity where the refrigerator broke and there was a new refrigerator and I was switching things over and discovered you fermented all of these, you made fruit kvass and beet kvass and fermented vegetables, and you have all of this stuff and it was shoved in the back of the refrigerator. Um, 
I also had seen, you know, the next big thing, everybody was making the El Ruderai yogurt. And I had always made my own yogurt and my own kefir and kombucha, but I hadn't really been consuming it lately. And all that brought me to, let's go back to your gut health. If you've done all the things that you think that you should have done in terms of your food, let's go back to your gut health. Plus I had gotten my labs and I was still 5.9 on my A1C, which is pre-diabetic. And I just don't know how to get that to move. So I decided I'm going to focus on my gut health and it's okay if I step away from being all meat based, mm. it's okay to have that change and realize something about this is not working or something else needs to happen in addition to this for this to work. And so this week I challenged myself to write down everything that I was eating and take certain times to test my glucose. And uh, what I would do is uh, take a before uh, reading and then I would take a 30 minute after, 60 minute after and two hour after. And the fermented foods, I was having four ounces of the yogurt every morning as the first thing that I consumed or whenever I started eating for the day, the four ounces of the El Ruderai yogurt was the first thing I consumed. And then I still stayed pretty much meat-based just because that's what I'm used to and comfortable with. Um, but I also wanted to test if I had, say, four or five ounces of protein was that spiking me as well? Was I one of those people that I needed to have smaller amounts of protein at a time? And what I found was typically after I ate, I would go up anywhere between 10 and 20 points. And after an hour, typically I started going back down. And at two hours, I was either back to my baseline or I was a little bit below my baseline. Um, and it was no different with the yogurt. It was no different than if it was just meat that I ate. I tended to see a 15 to 20 point rise. Now, in my mind, that seemed a little high just for eating protein, but I don't totally know. And it's hard to get an understanding just going to the Google and trying to put in, because if you say anything about spiking glucose, it talks all about carbs and stuff. And there's not a lot out there that I could find in relationship to protein. But generally speaking, I know they say 30 points or higher is a spike. So maybe that's just a normal response to my body. And I'll continue to check that. One of the good things was that I found out I make my own fruit scrap vinegar. And I fermented for quite a long time before I consume it. But I discovered that my vinegar spiked me. And I did not expect that. And I did test, uh, I added into my water and I was adding in the fruit kvass into my water. It did not spike me. I tested it. I added in the uh, fermented juice off of the uh, fermented vegetable thing that I did. It did not spike me. But one night I had... Um, made seafood cakes for dinner, which was just basically, I blended together some shrimp and salmon, an egg and a little pork rind, and I fried it up and I ate it. And I took, you know, the 30 minute and I took the 60 minute and I was already going back down to, you know, under a hundred. And then at the two hour mark, I was, a, I was 119. And I was just like, what just happened? How did that that change? Is it because more food got through, you know, because with the gastric bypass, it goes through slowly. And I had to consciously think and between the hour mark and the two hour mark, I went to refill my cup and I had been pouring the fermented uh, stuff from the refrigerator in over the course of this week. But the vinegar was sitting there and I just poured some of the vinegar in, and I had been drinking on that between the hour mark and the two hour mark. And I thought, you've been adding this vinegar to like everything you drink for the last year. Oh my gosh. And I had no 
idea. But in hindsight, thinking about it, there were some times where I drank it and I would get warm. Like I would have a hot flash coming on and I'd be like, what's going on? What's happening? Because ever since I've been meat-based, I don't have hot flashes. Even at 58, I have zero hot flashes, which I'm very happy about. And so, you know, really thinking about it, I was like, maybe this has been spiking you. And maybe this is one of the reasons that you can't. So even though full disclosure on Easter, my Easter dinner was Indian food and I had a little bit of rice and I had a small piece of non bread and I was inflamed Monday morning, but I got on the scale because I wanted to see what happened during the course of the week with my weight and everything. And then Friday mornings are my normal way in days. I was 8.2 pounds lighter on Friday than I was on Monday. And I have not lost a pound this entire year. Wow. Gut health is important. Yeah. Wow. That's so encouraging and so exciting. And then so overwhelming Yeah, because you're like, I'm doing all the things and it wasn't enough. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take this week as just a win and be grateful and I'm going to keep moving forward. And I have ordered, um, just because I was placing an Azure standard order. So I have ordered some sauerkraut um, and my favorite pickles. And I'm just, and then I will be fermenting, you know, because fermentation takes some time. And I like to ferment my stuff for a very long time with the thought that I'm fermenting all of the, you know, sugars out or whatever. But the thing I realized with the refrigerated fermentation it's just whey, water, and whatever you're fermenting, which is usually either a low sugar fruit or vegetables. And when I make the vinegar, that's the fruit and you're adding a sugar. So I'm going to do the refrigerated ferments because I'm making all this yogurt. I got a lot of whey. And so I'm going to do the ref- I'm going to do that type of ferment because that doesn't start with any sugars at all and um and keep that going and then um I'll probably make my own sauerkraut again along the way but I don't have all my tools with me right now so I may just have to purchase it for a while and and I have a few raw clean sources that I like so that's that's my update on my adding in my fermented foods and my gut health Thank you so much. I am so excited to hear that. Um, and I know that, you know, weight loss isn't really our, our goal in this conversation a lot, but whenever it happens, it's like just this icing on the steak, you know, it's just like, yay, like, yay, my body's moving in the right direction. Um, so I'm so happy for you. I always look at it as I was, I don't remember why, cause I'm always reading something. But I was reading something that said, if your body is holding on to weight, there's a reason, there's a a stressor, a thing that it thinks it needs it. And so for me, weight loss is hopefully meaning gained health. Mm. And that's how I look at it. If I am losing weight, my body is in a healthier place and it's not needing to hold on to it for whatever reason. And that means I'm moving in the right direction. Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that. It's, it's a sign that my body is healing. Yeah. So good. Awesome. Thank you, Monica. Thank you for that update. Um, and then also I got to give credit to Monica. Um, she, uh, gave us a great topic to talk about for today. Um, and I think that, uh, across the board, in the, the carnivore, low carb keto community, um, there's a lot, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of, uh, transitions. There's a lot of changes. And so we just want to go to the basics. Um, uh, Amy, you want to, you want to start and tell us what you, uh, what your idea was. Oh my goodness. So Monica was talking before we hit record and I got this, this 
like download situation, <laughs> this like I got this dump and I got goosebumps and I shared it with everyone just before we started recording and everyone else got goosebumps too. So it's gotta be good. Okay. So Monica, thank you um, for this. This way of eating is a platform from which we launch. We don't live on this platform. Mm. So imagine you have this rocket and it's sitting on the platform. It's getting ready for lunch. (laughs) I'm being attacked with loves. (laughs) The rocket doesn't stay on the platform. That's not the goal. The goal is for this rocket to fly, but not just fly. We want it to soar, reaching heights that we as humans would never have thought were attainable. But every launch does not go the same. Mm. It would be amazing if it did. And because it doesn't, there's this huge room full of people sitting at computers monitoring what's happening behind the scenes. Many of them have to make these little adjustments to make sure that we have a successful launch and beyond that. So of course, you know, we're the rockets. I'm sure you made the connection. We can launch a ton of rockets from this platform, which in this case is a carnivore diet, a meat-based way of eating. And yet all of those launches aren't going to be the same. Every rocket is going to fly in a slightly different direction. Their trajectories are going to be a little bit different from one another. They're going to encounter different obstacles and they are made differently. So there is no one size fits all. Just because someone online says, oh, this worked for me, do this and it'll work for you. It doesn't guarantee that. Because if that were the case, every time we launched a rocket into space, there would be like one, maybe two guys. That's all that would be needed because it's going to go the same every single time. But it doesn't. And so it's, it's crazy for us to think we are far more complicated than a rocket. We are so much more than an inanimate object that man created and built. We're so much more than that. So it makes no sense for us to think that we wouldn't need to make adjustments, that we would be able to just do what someone else did and get the exact same results. So I I love that Monica is finding what works for her. And if she was stuck in that mindset of, nope, I can't, I can't, it's not carnivore. I can't do that. I can't eat that. I have to stay on the platform. I have to stay here she would not have found the next step in her journey to healing of what was going to work for her. And I love that she listened to her intuition, her inner clarity, that she opens up the fridge and she's like, Ooh, wait, there's a thing in there. And it's not on my plan, but it's calling to me. My body is telling me I need what's in that jar. And she honored that. And she went to it and she was like, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to be smart about it. I am going to be diligent in my choices. I'm going to be careful in what I do. And she was also very scientific and she was paying attention and tried to work it out. Bless you. And she honored herself by listening to her body above what other people had said. And that is the most beautiful thing about her story is that she was honored back by listening to what her body had to say and not sticking with someone else's formula for success. I'm, I, I love it when people find their own path in their own way. Well, and, and to build on that analogy, you have to listen to your panel. You, when you're in that rocket ship, you have to look at what your readings are and your pressure of the cabin and your trajectory and everything. If you're looking out the window, I, you really don't know. I mean, you can feel like you're right side up, but you're the wrong side up. You have to to keep looking at your 
your control panel to know. And that's what I love about what Monica did was she was just like checking in with herself and going, oh, oh, wait, wait, where, where are we supposed to go? Okay. You know, but it's so important for us to, to talk about the platform, to talk about the, the one-on-one, the launching pad. Yeah. And unfortunately I don't have a room full of people on computers telling me what my body is doing on the inside. (laughs) And I mean, yeah, I could pay for a bunch of tests, but interpreting those tests is super important. And because we're so complex, you can't assume that one marker means something. You have to look at all the markers together. And let me tell you, that gets costly. Oh, thousands, thousands, and and almost, almost endless. It's a, it's a rabbit Mm -hmm. hole that you could go down forever. Yes. So we have to learn how to monitor ourselves and listen to the feedback that our body is giving us. And we have to become the interpreters. No doctor will ever be able to interpret for you. No one online will ever be able to interpret for you what feedback your body is giving you. And that's the the most amazing part of this journey is that we become the pilot. Mm. We become the one that's in charge of this. It's not because someone else said or we were taught this way. We were trained this way. Those astronauts, when they are trained, it's it's the basics. It's the foundation. And then when they get up there, they have to improvise. They have to make decisions. They have to fly by the seat of their pants sometimes to be able to survive what is thrown at them. So that was an absolutely incredible epiphany um, all triggered from Monica's fermenting jars in her fridge. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. Um, but we wanted to hear from you guys. We were talking about this uh, in the beginning. What do you guys have to say um, on this? Uh, and- on the on the basics. What yes. what were your what are your basics like? You know, it's your platform. I- I know that I'm not supposed to eat Doritos. I know that Doritos is not my my health plan. Oh, thank goodness. So does anyone have any platform information that they would like to share? Yeah. What was your, what was your launch pad? Go ahead, Monica. I can say that my constant has been whole foods, something Mm. as close to the original state that it was grown in. Um, because I don't like to track. And if I keep it whole foods and pretty much protein based, then I don't have to, in my head, the thought is I'm staying under 20 total carbs a day, but I know I'm not going to track them and I'm not going to count them and I'm not going to, and I don't want to. So if I just stick to whole foods as close to whatever happened, I never particularly counted carbs and vegetables when I ate them. So occasionally I might have a mushroom or something um, and I don't worry about that. But that has always been the thing that no matter if I was doing keto, keto or protein sparing, try to stick to whole foods and sort of in your brain calculate that you're staying under 20. And I, for me, I do total carbs. And that has been my foundation, whether I was doing protein sparing or high fat or whatever, those two things. That's a great basis. That's a great basis to start with. And, and, and that right there, I think we can all agree on. I think that there, you know, we focus on all the things that we don't agree on, but we can agree that Pringles, Doritos, ramen noodles, soda, cakes, you know, all that stuff it's not a whole food. It's not. And so we can agree that whenever we eliminate those things, we get to a basis and then we can unstart our health journey. So thank you so much for that, Monica. And just a quick thing. And I, and I've said this before, but I also had to recognize recently when I heard Dr. Sean Baker say, butter is a processed food. That blew me away. And I was like, what? Oh my gosh, it is that the butter doesn't just 
come out of the cow. We have to do something to make, we process that cream to get to butter. And so that gave me a whole other thinking on processed food. So that was another thing that I switched this week. Instead of butter or adding it as my fat of choice, I did pork belly along like a little side of pork belly with my meat to make sure that I got the fat in because I can't unhear that he told me it was a processed food and I'm trying to stay away from processed foods. It was like, well, okay, there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and, and, and we don't think about that, you know, we don't, we don't think about that. Um, and, and I think it's also what I've noticed is that it's a process, you know, we, we get to this certain level and then we start to fine tune things a little bit more. Um, so thank you so much for that, Monica, uh, Tom, I'm sorry, you had your hand raised. Yeah. For me, my base is, uh, beef, butter, bacon and eggs. And yes, I, I get what you're saying about butter. Um, the, uh, even the doctor, my, my wife's doctor from this past week, he said that, you know, butter is not good for you. I, I, I don't agree with him on that. Um, I think, I think butter is a safe food. Yeah, it is processed. You just have to, you know, look at what you're, what you're getting. Look at the, always look at the ingredients on the back and see how they're done. And uh, there's some butters that are better than others or processed even better than others that are cleaner. And so, you, I mean, if you do butter and it's not affecting you and you, and you're, you feel better than you, ever, you have in a long time and you're losing weight or you're maintaining your weight or you're maintaining your health. Uh, I mean, look at steak and butter gal. She, damn, she eats, st- she eats whole sticks of butter every day and she looks amazing. So uh, probably has the best can I've seen of anybody, uh, her and uh, Kelly Hogan. <laughs> um, Anyways, so beef, butter, bacon, and eggs are my are my basics, but m- mainly beef, um, you know, steak and, and, and hamburger, and and I, I can eat hamburger every day without any problem, um, and and not get tired of it. So that tells me a lot, just because I remember thinking about when I first started that how am I going to sustain this? And really, it does. I don't even think about the fact that I had steak yesterday and the day before that, or or hamburger two times uh, yesterday and this morning for lunch I, or this I had it for lunch today and I'm you know I'll have it for dinner tonight and that's not even a problem so that's my basic um and I guess when I, when I talk about you can experiment and you know I, I, I look at carnivore or or look keto as an elimination diet eliminate those bad foods that are make that are making you unhealthy and then work your way back from there um like just like Amy was saying with her platform the platform speech written in only five seconds. I love it. <laughs> yes. Um, Thank you. I, yeah. Thank you. And I love how simple that is, you know, just butter, beef and bacon and eggs. You know what I mean? Like that's just so simple. And yeah, I and like I also, that. It, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I also agree with Monica. I don't, I've never counted calories or uh, carbs or anything like that. I don't even bother worrying about any of that stuff. That even, that even, it's not even part of my, my daily routine. I don't even care if I do. I try to, I try to mentally stay under 20, just like Monica says, 20 carbs. If I get to 40, wow, no big deal. Cause if you look at any product that's not in the out, outer part of, the, of a grocery store, just take, just close your eyes and pick, pick one thing and then look at the carbs in there. And I bet you it's 36 or 40 or 50 or 60 carbs on that random thing that you just picked up or even more. So don't even worry about it. If you can keep your, yourself low carb, low carb, uh, you're doing pretty well in, in, for yourself. So don't put a lot of pressure on yourself by counting macros. And this is my opinion, uh, macros and worrying about writing down how many carbs you've had for the day. Don't even bother. Just, just go through your day doing what Monica does and, and others. So, and you're going to be fine. I love that. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Becky. What did you want to add? Oh, well, <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of the, something off the screen. Well, I was like, whoa, what did Monica just say about butter and John Baker? Because I had gone through a real big phase after I had my um, surgery reversed in August. There, I was just craving butter. And I'm like, whoa, what's that all about? So it was interesting to kind of hear what Tom had to say, too. I try to eat Kerrygold butter. Um 
if I can't, raw butter is available here, but it's like $17 a pound. So we try to, if we're eating milk, we try to get raw milk. But um, so basically what my basic platform is, and luckily my husband is doing this similar thing where you're eating eggs cooked in bacon grease with lots of bacon. It was kind of how much we want. And then a ribeye steak or hamburger or chicken wings or um, lamb chops. We like lamb chops a lot. So that's kind of when we're ideal, but we, we all, my husband and I both, and me too, particularly, he's better than a man. <laughs> Uh, we'll cave into the the carbs like sourdough bread is a problem for me. Um, and so, and then like Monica was saying at Easter, you kind of divert. You know, I have problems when I go to events. I will psychologically bring something planned beforehand. I'll bring whatever I think I want, like lamb chops or some, you know, uh, chicken wings. So I try to prepare like that, but I have to admit, I still was struggling where I'll have like, oh, they're having cute little this or that. And it's not bad food. It's not junk food, but it's not, it still might have more carbs, pr pr primarily bread, which is junk food, but not like Doritos. So um, I I was interested in, I interested in two things Monica said about the book that you said about, or the topic you said, maybe you guys can answer where you're holding on to something in your body because your body's still healing. So with the Parkinson's and the neurological thing, I was feeling like fat, fat, fat was going to nourish my body. So maybe I need to like monitor the fat now, but I think basically if I can just really go rid of the, rid of the, the carbohydrates and then let the fat and the protein just go by appetite that that's a best next step. <laughs> so, and then, and then what did he say about butter? And is it like, maybe I'm like, so that's a, that's a consideration, maybe the type of fat and then really not having the two energy sources of the high fat with too many, you know, too much bread or too much little bits of fruit or this or that. So like, uh, it, like um, Amy had said before, you had to watch your energy low kind of a thing. Too much, too much energy for my body. And I'm, I've gained more weight than anticipated after I had the malabsorption surgery reversed because I'm not eating more than I ate before, but I'm absorbing too much more than I did before. So um, it's an adjustment period for me. Okay. Um, so you're oh, asking... I, wanted, I do want to say that my right hand has come back to life where for about two years, I could heart, or maybe even longer, I couldn't use my right hand. It just sort of went by my side. So the last couple of months, it's wow. It's like a miracle. My hand is like, I can cook. I can, you know, use my hand. So that's, I'm going to do a positive progress report there. That's great. That's great. I'm so just, glad to do what? So just updating and checking in and saying hi. Okay. Awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so, um, thank you also for explaining your basics. I think that, um, that's really, um, really a great way to start out your platform, um, and to, to have that basis that you can always come back to. And I love that you have your husband on board for that. Um, and um, I'm sure that Monica can answer the, the other questions that you had. Go ahead, Monica. And, and also, the, is the yogurt processed? When we're talking about like processed butter, because that awful yeast doesn't come out of a like cow, pro, you know, as butter. But um, would yogurt like that be considered processed too? Or is that different because it's just... I don't know. I'm just, I, I mean, for me, I would say whatever your definition is. So for me, yes, I would say yogurt is a processed food because there's no, like yogurt is not straight coming out of the cow. Milk is coming out of the cow and we add a bacteria to it and a little bit of heat. And that milk is now what we call yogurt. It's now been fermented. So for me, a processed food is anything that is not in its original state. That doesn't necessarily make it bad. So let me clarify, I still eat plenty of butter and I'm not giving it up. He just, and, and I'll 
try to remember it, but he was on, uh, I was listening to him on a podcast and it might've been with Judy Cho. Um, and he just happened to say that butter was a processed food. And I was like, Phew. like, I had just never thought of it before, nor something like yogurt. So when we may say we don't eat any processed foods, and my, for my definition, a processed food is anything that is not in its original state as it came from wherever the source was. And so therefore, I, sure, I could believe that I'm not eating processed foods, but obviously I am. And, right. uh, and so him saying that just gave me the thought of, okay, how many things are you eating? And what is processed that you're willing to eat? I mean, when I started this in 2018, I did not know about even the companies back then that were putting out muffins or cookies or things to the community. And now we know that you can go in the store and 20 million things are labeled keto. So that was, I didn't grow up a snacky kind of person like that. So none of that got me. So I wasn't switching Doritos for Quest chips, but I still, for me, it's still important to look at, like Tom said, there are some butters that are better than others. And I do realize that I choose salted butter and I don't know what their source of salt is. Oh yeah. And then like, I know um, some people have to, like, I put it like I'm drinking coffee here with butter, Gary Gold butter and heavy cream in it. And I have to like evaluate that and maybe right. think about what, you know, the heavy. So cream. all I'm saying is that for my, uh, for my gut health, yeah, yogurt's a processed food, but for me, I'm making it myself. So I'm controlling the source of the half and half I'm using, choosing organic and I'm controlling the probiotics that I choose to put in to make my yogurt or make my kefir. And cool. for me, I think that's the best I can do than to leave sure. it in someone else's hands. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Awesome. Um, and Amy, go ahead. So Becky, I think you're focusing on the wrong thing. Oh, okay. You're looking at the butter and you're looking at the cream and you're looking at the coffee and yet you're going, well, the bread isn't as bad as the Doritos. I think that's the wrong thing to focus on. Oh, well, no, I think the bread is bad for me. I'm just saying when I'm eating junk food, I'm not eating like bags of Doritos, but my junk food is the sourdough bread. That's the junk food that I'm letting in. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that would be what needs to be focused on. Not yeah. the butter and not the animal based foods right now. That's, that's down the road. That's right. not messing with that is not going to fix the core problem. And, yeah. and I know how much you're struggling and that's why I'm saying something because I know what a hard time you are having with this. And I know how much of a draw that has to you. And I know how hard it is to overcome those things. And I don't ever want you to think that we aren't acknowledging that. However, it's our job to help you with sure. what we see, because we've been on that side and now we're on this side and I can look back and go, I was making excuses. I was mm. so worried about making sure that I wasn't eating, you know, a processed food and well, the junk food, don't, don't worry about that, but let's get this other stuff, you know, and I put all my time and energy into that and mm -hmm. it did not benefit me at all. You're saying that, you know, my hands are better, the Parkinson's, all of this. And yet, if you really want to truly see, you have to decide which one is more important. Really fighting for yourself to put those boundaries in place and holding to them so that you can find your true healing. Don't worry about the butter. Don't worry about the heavy cream. I would much rather you eat those processed animal foods than anything else. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And, um, like, I kind of feel like if I can just eat till I'm hung not hungry in satiety, the animal foods that even if it's gently processed cream or butter that then and avoid all the 
bread or the too much fruit or something like that, even if it's whole fruit, but especially the bread, bread's a problem, then that will be the next level up for me to achieve that goal. Yeah. Monica, go ahead. I wanted to say, um, I put something in the chat when you were talking originally, Amy, about, um, you know, your analogy. And for some of us, getting off that launch pad is delayed Mm. because our thinking is wrong because we're focused on, Oh, this is a weight loss diet because we've seen a bunch of people lose weight. And then there's people like me that are not losing weight. And so that's a delayed because I'm not giving myself the foundation on the launch pad. And when Becky said she now has use of her hand, which is amazing I instantly thought that is her launching. There's some healing that has taken place. There is some good done sourdough bread aside or whatever. The the meat, the fat, the reversal of the diet, the whatever has caused this healing Mm. to happen with her hand. And that is her launch off Mm. of the pad, which will be different than my launch off of the pad. My launch has been, my brain doesn't hum all day long. So I know it's not inflamed. And so when, when Amy talked about everybody's rocket is going to be different, every, we're going to weather different storms and our rockets are going to take different paths, but some of us are just not going to immediately fly. It's going to take time. It's going to take healing. But it won't happen if we don't first come to the launch pad. If our rocket doesn't get set up on the foundation of that rocket, of that launch pad, it's not going to happen. And so we can't focus on the flight until we give ourselves the fuel of healing to launch off. Like I could go all day with this. But I'm just saying, like, I'm giving myself chills, but I'm just saying, that's what I heard when Becky said, I was just like, moved to tears that she said her hand is working because that's huge. I don't, I don't know totally about Parkinson's, but what I've heard, that's huge that you're saying your hand works. So I don't care about hearing about your sourdough. I want to hear that your hand works because that gives me inspiration that this way can heal you, then it can heal me Mm. Mm. at its core, Mm. at its foundation. We can all have a foundation that we build upon to fuel us to launch. And you're launching and I'm launching and Tom is on and we're all, we are all launching, but in different ways. Our fuel is different but it'll get us to the same place, which is we are all going to launch. Amen. (laughs) Amen. No, that was amazing. And um, I know that we're running out of time. So um, I would love to go to um, Primos. Is that how I say your name? Yes, it's correct. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. (laughs) Good to Uh, see you. Thank you very much. You as well. Uh, I have recently found you, Emily. I'm not a native speaking uh, English guy. It's okay. But, uh, <laughs> but I will do my best. Uh, I have found your video on the, your four year anniversary on, on Meet. And it was, it was like, that is exactly, <laughs> exactly what, uh, what I needed. Uh, so my story is that I had a psychotic break, break at 18 years old. So now I'm 26 and uh, I have been going to the therapy, psychotherapy for six years, but all the, all the time through I was on the medication, which uh, made me gain 30, 30 kilos. Uh, and those medications really, they're, they're terrible. That everybody who ever was on this medication knows that they're terrible. Absolutely. Um, but I have um, I have been following Michaela Peterson, uh, Sean Baker, and now you. And I was so uh, light 
uh, heart warmed when I saw your video because I, it was exactly on my point. I was like, if I don't do something different, then I'm just gonna explode. That's not good uh, for me. So I am doing now the carnivore diet. Uh, actually, I have been doing it a little bit uh, like a couple of months ago, but I was not 100% strict. And uh, and now I realize that uh, I have to be 100% on, on it, uh, but I kind of struggle with my family and my co-workers because it's so hard to explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing this. In it's it's not natural, it's not normal in our place to do that. So I'm kind of on this phase right now, try to overcome that. Uh, but yes, something like that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Primos. For am I saying that right, Primos? Uh, it's in. I'm from Slovenia. That's in Europe, and it's called Primos. 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 Yes, yes. That that's that's close. The the last the last uh, letter J is called J. Primos. Primos. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. That's right. It's, it's awesome. Awesome. Um, well, I cannot thank you enough for sharing your story um, because I, I think it's also very important to point out that whenever we're thinking about this launch pad, it's very different for the reason that you're coming to the launch pad. If you're coming here for mental health, then it is pretty important to be a hundred percent compliant. Yes. yes I, agree. Um, I have had food injuries from bites of food, bites of food. And I look at other people and I'm like, but that doesn't happen for them. They're fine. That's the, that's the point. I'm, I'm, I'm off alcohol for eight years. I don't drink everybody in my, my age. Everybody drinks. Everybody is drunk totally and everybody's fine, but I have to take psych meds. Why the hell? And I was top of my class in the middle school and the high school. Ah, oh, so many things. I was good in chess. I was good in boxing, but I keep getting psychotic breaks and I don't know why. And I, I can't. I can't uh, further think that something is wrong with my thoughts, that I'm not personally okay. I don't want to believe that because it's not true. Something must be going on, some, something other must be going on. Like this idea with uh, this theory with, with metabolic health in this, I hope that that's the truth because that will save everything for me. Yeah. And I want to encourage you actually, because I have found that people who have a, a, a different path like this, um, it, you know, I know it's cliche, but with great power comes great responsibility and your trajectory for your launch is going to be far different than those people that you're talking about that, you know, are your age that went, went to high school with you. There is something that you are going to learn through this process that is, is specifically for your trajectory. And I'm so excited that we get a front row seat to watch you launch and watch you heal because it is going to be epic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emily. I, I, I respect and really really love what you just said now and i i also feel that it's true i feel it's true and um, basically the reason that i joined and i wanted to come is because not really because i need further education the food because i'm well very versed in that i would say i know what to eat eggs uh, beef tallow and beef that's all just eat that and you'll be awesome but i need support uh, like people that think the same people that do this diet and know that it's working, not people like that look at me like, what the, what's wrong with you? Why you eat only beef? I'm like, come on, man, think for yourself. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, you are welcome at this meeting every Saturday at this time. Um, if you would like to work one-on-one, -on -one, um, I, I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you my, my contact information. Yes. Um, yes. cause I love to support people daily. 
Um, and then also Amy offers um, some group huh? meetings. Um, and, and so you are not alone. Even if it's just this meeting, just this one little hour every Saturday, you're always welcome here. Um, and thank you so much for being brave enough to share your story. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So great to meet you. All right. Well, we are over time. Um, so I am going to end it there. Thank you guys so much for another awesome Saturday food support group. And I will see you next week. Bye.